Hey, all right there. Hello, welcome back. I am Dan Haggerty. Look at my fancy new little thing here. It's official. They even spelled my name right. Uh, hey, we're here to discuss the news, and I would like you to do that with me. And not just what's in the news, but how we do the news. Send me an email at dan at wrel.com. Like Shannon, who said, my mother asked me to email you because the way you say library is not always correct. Here's a video that may help. Here's a tip to say longer, more challenging words, break them into parts or syllables. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I got it, let's try. Lie, berry, library, nailed it. Now, I wanna show you this picture I took of my car this morning. I took this at 9.16 a.m. You'll notice that it's exactly one hour wrong, where it will remain for the next eight months until November 6th when we roll the clocks back to standard time. No, I'm not lazy, I just do enjoy doing the math, okay? Plus, I'm not the only one alone on this journey to not like this. Don't pretend like the time change hasn't tripped you up this week. An OSHA report shows a 5.7% increase in workplace injuries after we spring forward. In fact, it's more dangerous just getting to and from work. You're more likely to be in a car crash, and not just with people. According to this study from the Journal of Environmental Management, you're more likely to hit a deer. And what about these twins? Check out the headline. Second born twin is actually older than brother thanks to daylight savings time twist. It's confusing. And you know what else is confusing? People Magazine writing savings time, which is incorrect. It's supposed to be saving time because we're technically saving daylight, not savings daylight, but I think we all know know which one feels better to say. And if I seem irritated, that's, that's actually another one of the side effects of changing the clocks. Recent polling showed that most Americans, seven out of 10, dislike the twice a year time flops. So the question is, if we wanna stop the flop, where should we keep the clocks? Standard time or daylight saving time? Now, if you said standard time, no problem. Uh, that's easy. Any old state can do that. Uh, that's what Arizona does. That's what Hawaii does, as well as American Samoa, Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands. Parts of Indiana did it until 2006. They stay in standard time year round. They don't spring forward and subsequently never fall back. But if you want to stay in daylight saving time year round, which is what we're in now, that is when things get a little more complicated because of this. The Uniform Time Act of 1966. Now this law got all the states on the same page in terms of time, telling everyone when to spring forward and when to fall back. Now it does give an option for states to opt out of changing the clocks, but if they do, they have to stay in standard time, not daylight saving time, no matter how hard they try. In fact, all of these states have passed laws to stay in daylight saving time year round. North Carolina, you may remember, considered one last year, but it's all for show. They're just making a point because regardless of their new state laws on clocks, it's still against federal law, but perhaps not for long. Lots of us rubbed our tired little eyes in disbelief this week as we saw the headlines coming out of Washington. U.S. Senate approved a bill to make daylight saving time permanent. The vote was unanimous. That's right. A group of people who can't seem to agree on anything agreed on this unanimously. I mean, just listen to the way that Democrat Kristen Sinema reacted when Marco Rubio, a Republican, asked to finalize the vote. And the Senate will proceed. Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Rubio substitute amendment at the desk be considered and agreed to. The bill as amended be considered read a third time and passed and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Without objection, so ordered. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, yes. as Double fist pump, yes. Now before you hit purchase on that new pair of Ray-Bans, you should know this bill still has to pass the house, go to the president's desk, get his signature. And since this was all very unexpected, no one really knows how either of them are leaning on this issue. But if it goes all the way and becomes law, we will stay in daylight saving time all year starting in 2023. So what will that look like for you? Well, most of the year you're really not gonna notice, but when winter rolls around, the sun will start rising later and later and later in the morning. You see, typically in January, when our days are the shortest, the sun comes up around 7.25 a.m., sets around 5.15 p.m. But if we're staying in daylight saving time, if we don't roll back, the sun will eventually rise around 8.25 in the morning. That's nearly 8.30 a.m. and then go down around 6.15. So we'll just wait and see what happens. 
Though you should know, it has happened before and it didn't last long. I think this headline from the Washingtonian sums it up pretty well. The U.S. tried permanent daylight saving time in the 70s. People hated it. They used a clipping from the Washington Post from January of 1974 showing kids getting off the school bus in the pitch black. For some reason, parents aren't crazy about having their kids wait by the side of the road in total darkness during winter. Go figure. By October of that year, the experiment was over. Here's the New York Times, October 1st, 1974. Senate vote returns to standard time. Gerald Ford signed it, and just like that, we sprung back to springing back. Now, I know what you're thinking. I can't believe this guy is still talking. It's a good point. I know how you feel. It's your turn to say something. So please reach out. Tell me what is on your mind. What should the news be paying more attention to? What should we do a better job explaining? Email me at dan at wral.com.